Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we have something a little bit different. We're doing a mod today. And uh, this is the XK Detect X380 GPS quadcopter transmitter. It's a very popular um, low budget GPS quadcopter that works very well. And uh, I wanted to extend the range for FPV and just to have better range. So did a couple of modifications here. You can see uh, that I put this booster on here. This is a two watt booster. There's two antennas in this. I extended the other antenna out for uh, better signal transmission. I've also put on a switch to turn off and on the booster here. Um, I've also moved the gimbal pitch wheel from this location up to the top. Uh, this mod was done with the advice of one of the members on RC Groups, KK Deluxe, and he did a great job at relocating the pitch wheel here up to the, the gimbal pitch wheel up to the top for easier access when you're flying. You can actually easily access this instead of it being down here. It's very hard to fly while you're doing the pitch for the gimbal. So we're going to talk about how all that was done, and we're also going to talk about uh, how to do this uh, LiPo LiPo battery mod here. I've actually put in a 7.4 LiPo and I just plug it in here to power the whole radio and the booster all with a LiPo battery. So I'm going to take everything apart here and show you how it's all done and talk about it. So first off, uh, I will have all of these peripherals in uh, the description of the video, down in the description. So if you want to buy this booster and there's a few more parts just check down in the description and I'll have links on where you can get this stuff if you want to do this mod. So first thing you want to do is uh, open up the transmitter, of course. All you're doing is taking out these four screws. One, two, three, four. I've already taken them out, so I'm just going to pull it apart now. You're going to pop your transmitter open. And as you know, this, um, this is already done. So I'm just going to go over everything in detail of what I've done. When you do open this up, uh, this is going to be plugged in. This little wire here is actually going to be plugged in. This is where you'd put your AA batteries. And so these leads are going to be attached here. So what I, what you want to do is you want to unplug this initially so you can separate the two halves a little better without breaking any wires. So you can see what I've done here. We'll start with the antennas. I've actually left the stock antenna on this one. But what the stock antenna does is it just kind of coils up this uh, shielded portion and then the actual um, portion that transmits is really limited to its range by just sticking straight up like this. So what I've done is just kind of drilled out the top of the stock plastic antenna holder here. And then I've actually put in, um, just glued in the antenna sheath for, I think this was from the CX-20 I had, or I still have. I just need to fix it. But this is the CX-20 antenna sheath. And I just drilled all this out and just put the stock antenna and pushed it up in here. And so the stock antenna is actually coming all the way up and the transmitting portion is actually all the way up here now. So that'll really open up the range just by doing something, something like that. If you don't want to put a booster on, do something like that and you'll get way better range because the legs of the, the antennas on the XK Detect are actually pointing down. They're actually in the, into the legs and they're actually pointing in this direction down. So if you can mimic the direction with your transmitter antenna, and if you can have those both parallel, you'll get way better uh, reception and transmission. So that's all I did as far as this one goes. And then you can see on the other side, unsoldered the stock antenna on this side. And I just went ahead and soldered this in, mimicked the exact same soldering. Basically, you just have to strip. There's a center conductor and a um, shielding. You have to strip that off, and then you just solder it the same way that the stock one was soldered on there. And then I just ran the um, the antenna lead wire here, the shielded wire. And I just kind of made it work by drilling a larger hole in here and then using the existing, there's a plastic bracket in here. And I just drilled that bracket out until the whole booster comes with this assembly here and all of these connectors and washers and stuff. And I just basically drilled this stock plastic piece out until uh, I could bolt in this uh, fastener that the booster came with and then kind of just glued the plastic parts all in so it was nice and sturdy. So you can see how the antenna is nice and solid here. So anyway, getting to the power of the whole thing, uh, the booster does come with two power leads here and it actually has a JST connector 
built in here. And so what I've done is just kind of routed it here. This is a toggle switch from an old um, controller that I kind of repurposed. And I just took this toggle switch out. It's just a, a two-way switch off and on. And I went ahead and uh, there's just two wires coming off of this switch. And I went ahead and just, just cut the power for the booster and put this switch in between. It's only like uh, five to six volts of power, so the switch shouldn't have any problem um, handling that voltage. Um, so anyway, that's how I'm turning off and on the power of the booster separate from the controller, even though everything's powered by the same LiPo. Then I just routed the power down here, and this is the next item you're gonna need to get. This is a UBEC, this is a regulated power supply, and I'll also have the links of this down in the description too, so you know where to buy this. Uh, the reason being is because this booster here is only rated at um, 5 volts. Uh, it's supposed to only be, you're only supposed to be supplying 5 volts to, volts to this, so you don't want to uh, burn it out. And that's what it says on the um, product website. So what this does is this takes from 2S to 6S LiPo power, and it will regulate it to between 5 and 6 volts. Now I did try 5 volts and I didn't get the performance I was hoping for so I went ahead, it has this little jumper, you can switch between uh, the pins here that it comes with and you can switch between 5 and 6 volts depending on the two jumpers you put it on. So I went ahead and bumped it up to 6 volts and it's powering this the booster with 6 volts and it seems to be fine, the booster's lasted a while and I don't see any problems. So, And the way I mounted this booster is just basically double sided sticky tape right to the back of this board here and uh, it comes with this magnetic ferret core I guess just to um, make sure the power is clean going out to the booster and so you can see all along here the path I went ahead and just did some hot glue here just to hold the wiring in hot glue if you don't have a hot glue gun yet and you're in this kind of hobby definitely that's one of the main things you should get right away so anyway so the this this uh, power supply to the amplifier is coming down into the voltage regulator and then what I've done is I just spliced in this is the power to the TX the main power I spliced in that power cut it off of the uh, original AA battery box here and spliced it in to a JST connector I basically just drilled a hole and glued a JST connector into the back of the TX here and spliced this is coming from the LiPo spliced this to power the main transmitter and then splice this to power the power supply for the booster here. And so getting back to the back of the LiPo where I connect the LiPo basically just hot glued and then what I also did was I took a solder a soldering iron and I kinda just melted the plastic around uh, this JST connector just to give it more of a secure fit kinda plastic welded I guess you could say and then I went ahead and did super glue and hot glue on this one to hold it in nice and tight. And then moving on over to the back here, uh, this was the dual lock tape I had on another LiPo battery on before I did this mod. But basically you can see the JST sticking out the back here. And this is where the um, LiPo is going to plug in. Keep in mind that this transmitter itself can only handle, uh, it's rated at I think 9 volts. 9 volts is what the battery capacity in the stock battery form is. So you don't want to put any battery in here since I'm going, coming directly off the LiPo into the transmitter at 7.4 volts. You don't want to go with anything above 2S I believe on this transmitter otherwise you might blow, blow up the internals on this. So just make sure you have a LiPo that's uh, 2S if you're doing this mod. So here's the LiPo here. This is actually a repurposed LiPo. This, uh, I use this also for my um, SEMA X8G. I also did a review on. And it's a great battery. It fits perfect. And the way you fit this battery in here is you don't have to do much. All you do is cut off. Well, what I did is I cut off the uh, battery separators for those stock AA batteries. And I just cut them off enough to where this battery will slip in here. So if you ever wanted to repurpose it and you, it'll actually hold the AA batteries as well, nice and easy, albeit they're disconnected in the back. 
but if you ever wanted to, you could still put double A's in there. And then uh, the battery itself fits in here nice and snug. It fits in here perfect. And just to show you what this is, this is the SEMA X8G battery, and it's a 7.4 volt, 2000 mAh lithium polymer battery. And uh, just by, you know, going around seeing what batteries fit, this one seemed to fit perfect, and I'm sure it'll give you, it makes the controller a lot lighter because you don't have all those AA batteries in there. And then, um, of course, you can do any kind of wiring you want, but I just leave the stock wiring on here, shove it in here, seems fine. And then I'm using the, just using the balance connectors coming out from the battery. Just notched out the corner so I can close it up nice and tight. And we can have our wire just sticking out there. So when you want to power up, you just plug this in. And then go ahead and turn on the transmitter. Like that. Turn it on and then this would turn on your amplifier. Okay. So if you don't put this switch in, this cutoff for the amplifier, once you plug in and turn on your transmitter, everything is going to just stay on until you turn off your transmitter and unplug the, um, the LiPo battery. All right, so that is the install of the booster and the antenna modifications. So now let's really quickly talk about this uh, top pitch control, photo and pitch control here, button that uh, XK Detect has in this location originally. So I'm going to spin this around and let's see what we got. Okay, so for the pitch control mod, um, what you need to do, it plugs in right here. So this plug right here is where it plugs in to the board. But the um, you can see how I spliced in some extra wiring. I had to extend the wiring for this. The wiring is not long enough to reach from this location all the way to the plug-in. So you're going to have to either resolder some longer wire onto here or what I did is I just spliced in two locations I just basically cut the wire in half and spliced in and shrink wrapped here and here you can see the shrink wraps and this one um, just kinda got a little bit creative this is the mod from uh, I gotta give KK Deluxe on RC groups a um, some credit for this he's the one that showed us all how to do this in the XK Detect owners thread forum on RC groups so thank you KK Deluxe for that uh, and basically what it is is you're just unscrewing the original wheel from this location and then what you're doing is what I did is I just used my soldering iron and made a couple of grooves I just kinda like melted into the plastic a couple of grooves where I wanted this board to kinda sit in here and uh, and then just went with like a whole st stick of hot glue and just went ahead and globbed up the hot glue in here and made sure that it wasn't going to move since you are going to be having pressure on it when you're clicking in this button uh, for the focus on point feature which is in the new updated software um, you want to make sure it can withstand a little bit of pressure here so I went ahead and I went pretty liberal on the hot glue here so real nice real easy access and it looks pretty clean once it's all together and what I think I'm going to do the next thing I think I'm going to do is just put maybe a little uh, rubber sheath around this so it grips really good on the finger it kind of slips once in a while here so I think I'm gonna put like maybe a rubber band glue a rubber band on there or something or if I can find some kind of a, um, a lipped o-ring or something to kind of seat around here so I have a nice grip for the gimbal control and lastly really good idea guys I have to um, recommend doing this is when you have this thing apart look at all of the solder points when I took this apart, I noticed that there were eight on this side that were basically dry pins. And even on this side, there was eight of them that were not soldered in. So I went ahead and um, soldered those in. And then there was a couple odds and ends, like up here on this board, the solder looked really weak. So I went ahead and just hit it with some solder. So just do a full inspection. And that's kind of what you should do on even your craft too. Coming up next, I will be doing another video on showing the same kind of uh, presentation on what I've done with my X380, um, just how I've done all the range modifications and FPV on that as well. Um, so stay tuned for that video. After you do that, after you inspect all of your solder joints and make sure they're all good, go ahead and start just gluing stuff down with the uh, hot glue gun. Um, the hot glue does not weigh much and it doesn't really matter in a controller like this because you're not gluing on the craft for weight purposes. 
And what it will do is you can notice here I really kind of glob some hot glue on all of these kind of solder joints where the wire could eventually break from movement. And then also just to hold wiring down so the wiring doesn't fall and get into um, areas where you have your, your control gimbals here. You don't want wires to get caught in all this stuff, so you want to make sure stuff's held down. So I have a little spot of glue here. I have some um, glue here holding this ferret connector in. I have some glue here on this JST just to make sure it doesn't come apart or shake loose in here. And then I have some glue over here holding these antennas in and stuff. So I would just recommend being really liberal with hot glue when you're holding all these wires down just to make sure that something doesn't come loose and short or screw something else up in the controller. And then basically just putting everything together It'll just be sliding in just like this. Okay, and when we're putting it together, we're paying the attention to the power for the booster. Since the power does go back up into the booster, uh, I just kind of enlarged this little notch here on the top with my solder soldering iron. A little bit of an extra hole here, just so the wires can pass through and they won't pinch. And I'll just quickly just kind of power it up for you guys just so you can see how it's all going to be working here. So first things first, plugging in the JST to the back. And that's powering up the booster. And then we're powering up the controller. And you'll notice that uh, the booster is going to have this blue light when it's on and senses there's a transmitter signal. And so right now the booster is off because of this switch. And when I switch the switch on, there we go. So you can see the blue light comes on in the booster. And the blue light, it's kind of a neat booster. It actually uh, won't power up until it notices the transmitter signal is coming out. So uh, even if you forget to unplug the booster, at least it won't overheat because it'll shut itself down if you do shut off the transmitter. And I'll show you that right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut off the transmitter real quick. And you'll see that blue light go off. So there we go. So the booster is still plugged in and powered, but it actually shut itself off because it doesn't detect any transmitter power. And the transmitter is back on and the blue light comes back on. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, just kind of this detailed instruction on what I've done to extend the range on this. Now, I'm expecting this thing to go uh, three plus miles with this range. I also have a parabolic antenna, like a windsurfer antenna that I will put on here as well. And here's the antenna here. It's just basically a homemade windsurfer antenna with tin foil and some paper. You can find this online as well. Uh, I haven't used this yet. I haven't needed to. I've gone two miles without the need of this. Everything was fine and I just turned around for that two mile flight. But if you do start um, getting short on range, uh, this is a good option. It's a little directional. So you've got to point the concave towards wherever your copter is. But this will this will boost your range like crazy too. Even if you don't put a, a booster on, you can put this onto the stock antenna, and this will will really drastically improve your range. It is a little bit cumbersome, but it works really well. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial and it was informative for you. And uh, go ahead and check out the channel. I do a lot of uh, mods like this. I do reviews on quadcopters, action cams, all kinds of stuff. So please like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.